Hey, yo, yo, everybody, this is episode 137 of the Carrying the Culture Show. My name is Tamar. It's like Jamal, but with a T. Fun one tonight. I'm excited about this one. Where the fuck is Brooklyn? They right here. This brother and his group made an undeniable mark in the 90s. Up. I want to talk about this with joints like Swing It, Rerun, Rerun Things, we just, which we just had on. Uh, Remember We, the love song. So... Holding it down, heavy duty for Flatbush Brooklyn. We got Lee Major, JK, a hey, baby face chaos of the Bush babies. Thank you so much, man, for joining us. Appreciate you. Oh, man, definitely good to be here, man. Um, I, I, I got to say this before we even get started, man. I'm, I'm a big fan of the page. I frequent your page, and you know I frequent your page. Yeah. I comment. You know, back and forth. We got our Bokeem Woodbine stories. <laughs> well, uh, Bokeem Trash Bond. <laughs> you know, but more so it's the, it's the curation of, of the type of hip hop. You know, you got a lot of other, you know, cats that are out there. They got their, you know, their pages. They do what they do and they, and they put those records out there. But you be hitting me on some mornings, man. Them, the mornings right before I'm about to go do my run or whatever. And you just hit me with one of the joints that I got to add to my little playlist when I'm, you know, when I'm exercising. Oh, the, the, joints, like, the ones you forget about, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, oh, like, shame on me for even forgetting about that record. And I just got to hit you on that. That's what I appreciate the most about what you do, man. You know what I'm saying? It's just Bro, there's a lot of folks that feel the same way. I really do. I appreciate it because it goes a long way because, you know what I mean? Not everyone feels the same way, and uh, that's okay because you know, I don't just post music. I post opinions soon. The people just get the music. So, you know, and it's and, and so I just appreciate you for just, you know, being around and recognize, you know, being around. I mean, you see all the shit that we post, so it's not mm -hmm. just the music, but. You know, Absolutely. Yeah, I know you genuinely rock with the page, and I, I, I appreciate that, man. And then I was thinking, I was like, why haven't I had this dude on, you know, like, fucking. So um, <laughs> it's overdue but uh, i'm glad we got the ch we're getting the chance to to chop it up you know what i'm saying so yeah, i got a lot of questions so yeah thank you very much man i, I appreciate you for real definitely good to be here man good to yeah. be here oh, if you guys got questions uh please put them in the, use the questions feature below it's right it's got a question mark and then i can pull it up um and then uh, everybody can see it so let's jump into it man um i'm a history dude so i, I mean you probably I just like to know where cats are from and the whole shit. Mm -hmm. And being from Flatbush and, and stuff like that. So, uh, is it getting on? Okay. Um, being that you're from Flatbush, I, I really, I want to get into the heart and the vibe and that, that, that time, that place, because it's so critical. Um, first album dropped in 94, I believe, but you guys were obviously doing things before that. So, um, and you rep, you see the name, BK Hard, Flatbush Hard. So take us back, man, early Brooklyn days, man. I've heard a lot of stories. I'm from Connecticut originally, so, I mean, I, I was hanging in Brooklyn, but it wasn't until, like, 96, 97, um, and stuff like that. But, you know what I mean? I didn't grow up there. So, I, I like, and, and so, you know, I need to go there. So let's, we're going to go there for a minute. Take us to your early, early Brooklyn days. I've heard the stories, you know, D7, low <laughs> <laughs> What's up? Um, early Brooklyn days, man. Um, Flatbush. Uh, even before the damn the the late eighties, be uh, just a crazy period in time, man. Not just for hip hop, but just for living in, in those areas, man. Everything that you know, the crack era brought to us, you know. Unfortunately, that that kind of robbed us of a, of a lot of things. I, I remember being able to ride my big wheel up and down the block, so on. And I remember the space just got smaller. That whole joke that Chris Rock said actually, actually true. You know what I'm saying for a lot of people. Um, but growing up, going to school, um, Walt Whitman, um, E Hall, Erasmus, all those you know places. Holy Innocence on East Twenty uh, on East Twenty First, um, just a lot of shit, man. Decepticons, um, just you know, the the craziest shit is just knowing that any moment coming from school, going to school when you of that age, that anytime it can happen, man. And, and if you don't know the right people, if you're not saying the right words, if a dude asks you what size your shoes and you don't say it's your size, it's gonna happen. You know what 
I mean, so just knowing how to walk around, what to do and what to say in certain situations, you know what I'm saying? You on the train about to go to school and whatever and 40 decepts come through the train cars, you got to know protocol. That's just, that's just what Brooklyn is. You wearing a certain hat, blah, blah, you know, whatever. If you ain't saying the certain names in certain areas, sometimes you can't get through. Did you you have, know what I mean? It's just, you have these situations. I mean, because I, you know, I ran around. I, I took some losses. I've given some cats some losses, too. I mean, like, and like you know, I mean. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, I'm, I'm coming up East 18th Street. Um, Coming up East 18th Street. And um, coming from school, and at that point, I had the, ooh, I had the, um, the, uh, what do you call it? The lumberjack coat with the lumberjack sleeves and the leather inside with the fur joint. I had the beaver kango. I'm coming from school looking, I'm, I'm, I'm right where I needed to be for that time. So I'm walking down the block, you know what I'm saying? It's, Usual dudes that you see walk around, whatever, blah, blah, blah. All of a sudden, one dude come up, um, start beefing, whatever the case is. I'm stepping backwards. Next thing you know, by the time I go to look behind me, dude was actually like, like a fucking movie was like, um, like bending down on fours. So by the time dude pushed me, I just fell over, grabbed my hat, couldn't get my coat. I'm running after him. I get like halfway down the block. I'm on East 18th Street. So I get to like Church Ave train station. And halfway there, I'm like, why the fuck am I running after these dudes? Like, I'm going to be able to do something once I catch them just to keep it a buck with you. And I think about halfway of them, me running, these dudes started to slow down. Like, what the fuck is we running from this dude for? It was like, all right. <laughs> Took the loss for that moment. But the good news is um, having a, a, a a solid Panamanian family in Flatbush helps knowing the right people. You know what I mean? You get your hat back. Oh, so, <laughs> so like, um, yeah, it seems it seems like you could get got any time. So I'm gonna name out some places that I that I, that I, I've heard just through my friends and just mm -hmm. you know whatever that just. Stick out. All right, Church Ave McDonald's. Mm. I heard my. Big up to my man Peter Ammo. He he talks about that a, a, a few times. I mean, that, that was like Church Ave uh, McDonald's. My aunt used to work at the Church Avenue McDonald's. Um, I remember going fishing with my uncle and bringing the fish raw into the Church Ave McDonald's. Like, look what I caught, Auntie, just raw fish, bringing it to the Church Ave McDonald's. <laughs> Yo, real quick, if you don't mind, just to frame it, because it always helps me. Like, uh, how old are you? Or just frame the time, like. I'll be 50 in, in January. Okay. All right. So, all right. You're, you're like, like three years older than me. All right. So, I'm yep. just trying to just put, put it there. Yep. Right. Um, I'll be square more. I'll be square more. Um, first time I ever got a rhinestone jean jacket. Mm. Oh, <laughs> With the lead. With the Lee on the back, with the Bugs Bunny, with the peace sign up, and the Lee on the spray painted on the hat with the with the rhinestone. Okay. 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 <laughs> All right. Um. Albie Square Mall. <laughs> yeah. Albie Square Mall was also one of the places that if you smart, you go there with the bag that say brown paper bag when you go shopping because when you come out if you're coming out there with them fresh nike bags and all that other stuff not a good look for you Damn. unless once again <laughs> you know what you know you know who you know but you know yeah alvin square mall was a beautiful place to be man it was a nice place man definitely enjoyed it. a lot of a lot of creativity around those areas all right so what was the area over by is that tell me by um so when I go to Brooklyn, that like so when I started chilling in Brooklyn, mm -hmm. and I was gonna move there. All my friends from New Haven moved to they moved to Park Slope, mm -hmm. and and so um, just tell me like in terms of like geographic wise, mm -hmm. Park Lays now like what is that? Is that is that is that Park Slope? Is that Flatbush? What like what is that? That's downtown, downtown Brooklyn. Downtown Brooklyn, right? That's down, downtown Brooklyn. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty much downtown Brooklyn. Um, you're dead smack in downtown Brooklyn. That whole area, I went there for 
um, went there this summer, and just all around the area, it don't look the same, man. That's you Atlantic Avenue? Yeah, Atlantic Avenue, yeah. Yeah, okay. All right, all right. So, that's all right. A, go ahead. That's a, um, Atlantic Avenue. If anybody from Brooklyn, they know this. If you go to school and you're from Brooklyn and you go to school in Manhattan or you have to travel in Manhattan, when you take that train and just about any train coming out of Brooklyn more than likely is going to lead you to Atlantic Pacific. And there's a long corridor that takes you from Atlantic to Pacific. Navigating that corridor when you get to a certain point in that corridor is important, important. Navigating that corridor, understanding our age. Now, navigating that corridor and having an eight ball jacket or Sherlin on is like <laughs> it's a different situation. Bobby, we, yeah, Bobby, dude, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, it's like a video game almost, <laughs> huh? Like you turn around the corner and just <laughs> damn. Yeah, that was a, that was a, that was nasty work over there in, in that in that area in that corridor coming from there to there. Big up light, yo. That's yeah. He said, Big up light, yeah. He said it was all right. So yo, where like and I and I, you know, tried to do a little research, but at the same time I have my own questions. Um, where did mm -hmm. you and how did you hone the skills? You know, what I mean, I've heard Washington Square Park come up a little mm -hmm. bit in the narrative um, lounge but where like because bush babies was the album dropped in 94 right but like you guys were together and you were doing it since when um for me i would say about in 90 it was t um like everybody uh that time school getting into talent shows rhyming uh, you know around your way then trying to get into the talent show first started off funny story um i did jingling baby ll cool j at the talent show had a big purple suit on with the big nefertiti chain that i borrowed from my man oh, <laughs> you know what i mean so i'm on there and you graduate you know what i won't go up there this time and i want to do my own rhymes Right, right. So you start, and then I was trying to get on, some, trying to get with this crew that was ramen, and they shut me down. And so when they shut me down, that's what made me go back and say, "Ah, right, you know what? The next talent show, we're gonna take this seriously, and and you know what I mean, and, and really get to it, and get to it." And then from there, just started blossoming. And then I met uh, Mr. Man Khalil. And from there, he was just one of them dudes that was already in the industry. He was already doing these things that I was just doing around the way. Okay. You know what he, I mean? he was from, um, you guys were all from, from the same area? Yeah, he's from um, Glenwood. Yeah, he's from Flatbush as well. He's from Flatbush as well. From a diff um, I'd say a different side of Flatbush, but nonetheless, Flatbush, um, more so like, towards Flatbush Avenue. If you're on a train station, you're taking the two to five and you go all the way to the end, that Glenwood area, uh, from that area, I was more so from, uh, well, yeah, more so from Bedford Ave, Ocean Ave, East East Flatbush, East 38th, okay. around those areas. Got, got you. So, um, yeah, I, I looked this up. Tell me if it's right. So you guys were rocking the lyricist rounds at like the first, the first joint, first lyricist. We was rocking at the lyricist lounge before it became before the name was lyricist lounge. Wow, tell us about the that. The way that it really came about is once you rhyming in your own area, there was this like this in New York. There was this area that you would go to called Washington Square Park. I know exactly. I caught a lot of weed from Washington Square Park. <laughs> right. Yeah. And it was this, and when you go to Washington Square Park, you usually MCs, MCs, MCs from here, from there, from there. You'll be surprised how many MCs was rhyming in Washington Square Park that you know made records that you know of now that started just rhyming in Washington Square Park. So we would all go to Washington Square Park, and Cash used to get in these ciphers, and the ciphers was about being able to freestyle, being able, you know, you had to have your written. Those were the times where you had 94 16s, and you was just, it was just a matter of when it's your turn in the cipher, go, go, go. So that's what really honed 
our skill. And then what happened was <clears throat> that cipher turned into something that people wanted to do inside. Right. And right. once it was housed, it became Lyricist Lounge. So it went from basically the Washington Square Park vibe to, to Lyricist Lounge. Right. It but and, and it went to this place on Grant on Grant Grant Street or Grant Ave in Chinatown. Okay. It's this upstairs area. We went in there one day and Kurt Burroughs invited us. At that time Kurt Burroughs was with Lyricist Lounge, if you remember. Um Kurt Burroughs is uh an old bad boy camp. Okay. Right? So, so Kurt Burroughs was in there, and that's when we were introduced to Anthony and, you know, dudes from uh, Lyricist Lounge. And most Def was playing the drums, and Cass was passing around the mic. And then dudes had beat tapes that they would, like, beat tapes that they would play or, you know, they would, you know, hit the drums, whatever, whatever it was. And you just pass around the mic, and you'd be spitting. And most then Def it became the Lyricist Lounge. You said most Def was playing the drums? Yeah, yeah. First time we went there, most was playing the drums. Cats was spitting. It was most Adolf the Assassin. Uh, Adolf the Assassin. Now Ag Aguilar. Uh, um, uh, Mop Tops. If you remember? Uh, Mop oh, Tops. Yeah, boot, of course. Stretching. Exactly. Um, those cats um, and a couple other cats that were all part of that like first group of heads that was just there. Oh, Stellar Dwellers, oh, of yeah. course. Yeah. Big up to you, G. Big up Fantastic. Yo, so, yeah. so, so I, I came in this as a dancer and so Mop Tops, their influence, their misfits. Right, their right, up, right, right. Up to CT, really. Big. That's like my lineage as far as like, right. to, but they are, people forget that they was, they hip hop heads though. Like, right. You know oh, so. yeah. Crazy. So that came through there, and then um, um, Malik from the Roots, and all of these dudes. We just everybody comes there, and that's where you gathered, and that's where you spit, that's where you run. And then it just got bigger and bigger. It became, you know, what it is today, man. Peace to them dudes, man. So yeah, when you were, really when you were in the uh, doing it in the park, like it was just. Loose shit, or was it crews going at each other? Everybody just spit. It was just on some like, was it like super competitive, or was it on some friend shit? Because I've been in like b boy cyphers where, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. a lot of schools, we just kind of rock it and practicing and training and shit like that. We get yeah. loose, and then mm -hmm. I've been in shit where it's like, yo, you better if you don't hold it down, you fucking getting your, you know, you getting, you know, pushed up. <laughs> what was that vibe? So, no, nah, it was more of a free vibe. It was cash just spitting. You okay. spit, then somebody else spit. But if you're not, you know, really up to that par, you you kind of the, the the cipher closes out on you. You know what I mean? It it, it shrinks on you. But yeah. that was it was a beautiful time, man. Because that's that's another McDonald's. There's a McDonald's, no, um, uh, West Eighth Street, the park right there on uh in the village. There was a McDonald's right over there, and that was another spot that people used to spit oh, wow. at as well other than West 4th Street, because they had a big, ba they had a basketball court over there, right? And then right, right across the cage, and then right across, they had a McDonald's, and over there, cats used to also spit over there. And I say spit to like 2 in the morning, 3 in the morning. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I've seen some games over at, uh, over at the at the cage. That's, that place is, that shit is tight. That shit is nuts. Over right, um, right. Yo, who, who else, uh, can you remember anybody else? Was it, was that was, um, the, the audience would know that was um at the, Sure. Yeah. Um, outside of the other, I mean, most was definitely a regular. That's how we actually met. I mean, it's um, not, well, it, actually, he was at Washington. I'm sorry. He was at Washington Square Park yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, oh, definitely, definitely. From from the beginning, beginning. Um, I would even venture to say maybe before us. Wow. But he was there from from the from the giddy. <laughs> um, and then other dudes like um, Al. Um, bunch of cats. Uh, Dos Effects uh, would be out there. Um, damn, just a lot of different dudes, man. I can't name them all off the top of my head, but West Fourth was like a haven for just MCs that would be out there. A lot of them dudes that you saw in the Lyricist Lounge show, Wordsworth, and all of those cats that was on that show was also in those ciphers as well. Punchline, the, uh, okay. Yeah, punchline. There you go. Yes.
So that's that's dope, and this is a I, I really like hearing this because, you know, people hear about different aspects of what happened in hip hop and you know, part, but like, you know, West Fourth isn't a common spot that people talk about when they you know. But that's the beauty right. of New York, though. People don't understand, man. This is why I love it so much, is because like, Manhattan is like different, and it's like you know, like I've I've been at Washington Square Park, and I've been in. It's different, like try back in different spots at mm -hmm. Alphabet City. It's all you know, and it has its right. own. There's lots of ill shit going on everywhere in the city, which is you know, which is you know, kind of what makes makes it makes it dope to me. But like, you don't hear about West Fourth. You know, I mean, no, you don't hear about that. What? But let me tell you, that was a a big introduction to a lot of cats that you know just came through. Black Thought was another one that was you know, you know big out there in the lyricist lounge. Era. Oh, yo, did you did you participate in any other um like elements of, of hip hop? Like, did you do anything else other than MC or oh, a lot of cats started? Um, initially, I was the beatbox. I still am. If we on stage, I'm a, I, I, my beatbox is is, is stupid. Oh, work? Yeah, my beatbox is stupid. Oh. Um, <laughs> I used to pop. I used to white glove pop. Put down the cardboard box and and get busy. Um, I couldn't break dance though, but I used to I used to kill it on the pop side. I'm a I'm a horrible artist, so graffiti, not too much. Right, right. I'm a, but I, but you know, I enjoy the art form. Yeah, but I, but I bet you would still at least try to have like a semi decent hand style, just like because that, <laughs> like like I mean it's because you know like we all like I know Castor didn't write, but like back in the day we all kind of dabbled and shit. So it's like yeah, everybody. Tried to like write their name kind of yeah. cool, you know. What yeah, I mean? yeah. That's funny. My first name I was writing was Chaos, right. and on right. my rhinestone jacket was how I, you know, how I. There you go. So, so it's 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 all and that and that's the beauty of what we you know like it's mm -hmm. it was all of this shit, man. And then you kind of found your found your found your groove. You know, Inspector Deck was telling us mm -hmm. that like him and Ghost used to battle like at school, like yeah. you know, but he's like Ghost can win. Me. And shit so mm -hmm. you know um so let's jump into the, the first album man which which in some ways is slept on but but it, it's it was huge for me because when i saw the video and then i did the research on some of the album you had like everybody you know salam remy jermaine dupree and ali shah shahi muhammad so first of all how did that like how did that manifest as far as getting them i mean this was back in the days you know like, how did that manifest? <laughs> All right, I'll take you on a a bush baby journey right. that um that light I'm sure is listening said yeah tell tell it tell it the way it needs to be told and, and man is saying the same thing. So initially, our first album, in my opinion, truthfully, our first album was who we thought we need who we thought we needed and should be right. at that very moment in time. Our second album was who we found out that we are. Let me ex explain. <clears throat> Initially, the records, the re reason why we were reaching out, we had Jermaine Dupree, we were reaching out to so many other, you know, different people because we were trying to establish, let's get this great producer. We were signed to Warner Brothers, so we had a budget. So it was reach out to this one, that one, get this, get that. You know what I mean? And it turns into something that's, it's yours because it's what you wanted, but there's no real guidance behind it. You know what I mean? There's no one. We didn't have someone in the studio to, to, to mentor or anything. We were just doing what we wanted to do for three quarters of the album. Okay. Then what happened is Warner Brothers switched staff, and in comes a new A&R named Ian Alexander. And he was one of, at that time, we started shifting in our way of looking at what we should, what we wanted to rap about, what we wanted to be, how we felt about what was going on. Because at that point, while we were looking to get into our second album, um, it was the shiny suit era. Mm -hmm. And it was a rebellion against that at that time. But in 
in our first album, there was no, it wasn't rebelling against anything. It was just, we got a deal. Let's rap. <laughs> you understand what I mean? So with that great, you know, you're going to get some great rapping or whatever the case is, but the difference when you look at the first album to the second album, which I was talking about three quarters of the way, three quarters of the way Ian came into play. When Ian came into play, we started developing this new mindset. In the meantime, he was one of those guys that was closely connected with the whole native tongue element. Gotcha. So in walks the Q-tips and the uh, Ali Shaheed Muhammad's and that particular crowd, which also came from us knowing most and us put, you know, having most on our records at that time and so on. So in that, right before we were sealing the first album, um, the first album, we did um, We Run Things. That was the last song. Okay. That's why that sounds like gravity. Right. Right. There's a big difference. <laughs> yeah. I that noticed. sounds like gravity, but everything else from there. And then um, Remember We was a remix from Salam, but there's an original Remember We on the Ambush record. Right. But the Remember We that everyone knows was during that time when we got with Salam, who had just finished producing a song for the Fugees, um, the, uh, the Mona Lisa record. Okay. And we got with him, and he played that beat for Remember We. And we said, you know what? We got a song for that that we already, and we put those two together. And that song gave us some of our biggest notoriety. Um, that song got nominated for MTV Music Award. Um, but that was only because we were in this space at that time. Where It's funny how God puts you in a space at a certain time, and then everything else starts coming together, and that's when you know you're in the right space. Right. But ambush was very important for us because three quarters away, we needed to go through all of those things to find that we run things. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's that's dope. I'm glad you took us on that on that little journey because it explain it explains all explains it because there's a line that you say and it's it stuck with me. Yo, this is ninety ninety four. Damn, twenty nine years or whatever. Um, you know, gotta. It, it, you said this in 94 got a million rappers and a thousand djs like yo that stuck with me for listen to this day and as i you know you see me wilding out on here about about the state of hip-hop that line always comes up i'm like yo this cat said that back in the day so what at that time so are you saying it was basically we looking at the shiny suit there like what was what made you say that then because yo that was a long time ago. that was a long time ago because at that that time it felt like we started mass producing hip hop remember i'm coming out of the 80s where it was there was a a a, a personality and a motif per artist and they weren't highly saturated because you couldn't see them every day you weren't in their stories looking at when they go take a piss or when they go to sleep at night right. you know what i mean so it be it was something that wasn't as saturated and it was about you know, 20 or 30 of them, and everyone didn't sound like each other. And then all of a sudden, then the 90s came about, and we had this new sound, which was, you know, dope as well. But then all of a sudden, once that that era hit where it was, it, it started to get very saturated with more so what you look like. And it was always, everybody always had a rope chain. It was always, you know what I'm saying? That That was always a part of our element. But once it started to really get, to, to that shiny suit era, it started to get really mass produced. Yeah. It be, yeah you know what it was? I'm gonna tell you what I, it's something that I always say when I listen to records and I hear it now. One of those, it started to become cookie cutter to the point where you can hear a record and say, okay, insert artist here, insert chorus here, full right. bar set up here. Yeah, no, it became, certainly became like that and we take us into the 90s, later 90s. He had gems there, but yeah, then it got, and then the forgettable early 2000s. <laughs> the factory, it started to become the factory. Yeah. The factory started coming out, and we just started mass producing. It wasn't about the best dude on your block is the one that comes through and then, you know, moves on to, to go here and then goes here and then gets a deal and whatever the case is, it, yeah. you know. Nah, and now, you know. Yeah, we, we know what it is. So, um... Hype Williams did that video, right? Yeah. The, 
Yeah, uh, yeah, we run things. Hype Williams, early, early Hype Williams. That's crazy. Like, yeah, yeah. like, great, great. Like, yeah. So he was he from you? I mean, how did that link up? Like, I mean, because you know, for me, mm-hmm. when I everybody that was on, like, in my mind, when I'm turning on TV and I see you guys. Like you guys were automatically ten years older than me, first of all, in my brain, right? Like, <laughs> and also it's like. So these were names out here, you know, like in terms of like Belly or whatever, like Ike Williams, oh shit, he did this. So, you know, but I, again, I, I started to realize that in that in New York, it's so big and that like, mm-hmm. and when I hung out there more, like you would just see cats around. Like, I mean, cause pe- people gotta go out. Like, so it's not like, you know, so how, right. how did you, to me, you linking up with all these cats is crazy, but like in a lot of ways, you know, some of these cats were like in the, you know, in the neighborhood or just you you meeting up with them right yeah you meeting up with folks industry you meet certain dudes that are real cool and you know what i'm saying we start hanging and i tell you um what helped after a while when it was the um the era of the two-way pager probably one of the best ways in new york (laughs) at that time that cats would just communicate that two-way pager was like it was it was the internet (laughs) <laughs> it was, you know what I mean? It was social media before social media. It was a great, but that was one of the ways. Yo, there's an industry party here. So-and-so album releases here. This, this, and this is happening. You know what I mean? And you just go and start to meet people and you mingle and you, you know. Yeah. And it's, it's so funny because one one thing I realized that it's New York is huge, but it's also really small. It, it's it's so, it's yeah. to me. Like it's, you know, like, I, mean, I chilled there for like every weekend for like five years straight mm-hmm. and after a while it was like oh okay like i mean it was like in terms of it's small like, like you st- people go you know people have their spots they go to and stuff like that too so it's interesting in that in that same way yeah. you know it's still yeah neighbor neighborhoody if, I, if that if you will oh definitely and every neighborhood is different it's to a point now <clears throat> my wife jokes to me about it because i'm in orlando florida now right so a lot of new yorkers out here so the thing for me now is you from the bronx oh so how you know you from brook and you could just i could speak to you for and you just know where people are from if you're from there because yeah. each borough is is different you know in in certain ways yeah and i i noticed that too the one thing i do notice i do know is about is about harlem cats is that they're happy like this or if a, <laughs> He from Harlem, if his shit is on the side of BC style on the side of his dome, you know? Like, I do, I do know that. I, that's one thing. <laughs> I have to spread all the, like, yo, it's Harlem dude. Um, yo, so, um, like, real quick, what's, would you say your, how would you say your label experience was? I mean, o- overall, I mean, in terms of this, and this, I've heard, like, mm-hmm wild stories from people and you know like tragic so i mean overall like what was what was that like for for you just um um, it's funny because uh a lot of um things that we experience industry wise now when we look back at it as an adult sometimes you say damn where were the adults <laughs> How old were you, you know when I mean? you dropped the first album? Um, when we signed our contracts, I was the only, I believe, between myself and I think Mr. Man maybe was over 21 and didn't need a a, a parent or someone there to, to accompany us when we signed. You know what I mean? Because I remember, like that was the case. I remember my grandmother was there for the experience, but I was, I was 20, I was at least 21 at that time. Wow. You know, but um, as far as a label experience, initially, it's like any other relationship. The courtship is beautiful. Mm. Come with us. Let me fly you out here. You know, <laughs> let me fly you out here. Let me introduce you to this person. Let's do this. Let's do that. Here's some money. I remember the first time we got our advances and they gave us our card and we ran into the middle of Manhattan as folks with no 
real financial, now that we're older, no real financial education and a credit card in our hand and, you know, a CPA and we just went bananas. We had a credit card in our hand and a, and a, and another phone number that we can call to get a company car anytime we want. And it could be a limo or it could be a Lincoln town. This was through Warner Brothers? This is through Warner. So, but this was the advance, I mean, uh, advance that you had to pay back, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, we didn't talk about that part, right? <laughs> you said we're flying out. Like, like I, I said, the courtship was nice. We went yeah. out to dinner. You flew me out here, but once we got back to the room, it was time to pay. And just like in any relationship, there's a time for courtship and there's a time to pay. Paying is not always money. It could be anything. It's just the matter is that's why you got to watch the courtship. <laughs> because the labels, that's what they do. It's just a courtship. You know, the crazy thing now is they advertise it and they put the camera on you as you put the big chain on and you, hey, look what he got me. It's almost like a ring. <laughs> it's, a, it's a courtship. <laughs> Damn. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that the courtship was beautiful. Um, after the courtship came the hardship. Now, with the hardship, here's a couple things that you learn by going through this process. And if you have an industry that's moving rapidly, mm -hmm. such as hip hop was at that time, you know, there was a, a Gavin, a, 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 a Jack the Rapper, or this you had to go to with that. And you're working with a company like Warner Brothers who had, we were on a, a, a we were on Warner Reprise. So it's a, so these type of labels, the way that they operate, they weren't operating within the same way that these, small rap boutique labels were working. Example, album comes out, you'll take up a big page for Bush Babies and Billboard, mm -hmm. but Nas will get a big page in, in, in Source. Right. Here's the pro problem. People that get the Billboard magazine at that time don't buy records. Those are industry people. Mm -hmm. Industry people look at Billboard, and industry people don't buy records. Paying customers get the source magazine, and that was our only, and that was the <laughs> for us to, to get music. Right. So we, right. but if your label doesn't understand that, they dump all of that money into that billboard, add it, and say what happened. Yeah. <laughs> and now I can tell you, this is what happened with the money you spent there. You could have took out three ads in the source. Which album did better for you guys? You know, huh? Which oh, album? Gravity. Yeah. Gravity. Gravity. Um, so, yeah, that was our thing. It were, Where we started to split with the label, I remember we were in Texas, and um, Gravity came out, and we were trying not to repeat the same thing they did with Ambush. And what they did with Ambush is they wasn't giving us any promotion. See, the thing about pre-motion or promotion, it has to be done before motion. So you can't just put an album out with no promotion. And we literally just put it out there after putting out a video thinking that's the way they operate because Warner operates from that, mm. you know, from that type of circle. So when, when, when Gravity came out, we were trying to make sure that the same thing did not happen. And all of a sudden we're in Texas and we go to a, 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 link, we go to a, a record shop and all of a sudden we see our album. It was like, oh, God, they did it again. And when they did that, we was like, you know what? We're not coming home. And we knew the um, dude from the street team so well out there in Texas. Dude was like, yo, come crash at my crib. We good. And we stayed with a homie for a while and, and didn't come back home until they, you know, so they do something to get this shit right. Wow. Yeah, man. It was yeah. crazy. Yeah, it sounds wild. So I can't believe we only got a few minutes, like 20, 15 minutes left. With the mm -hmm. this, and this. I, I, I got you. A few other things to, to cover, though. So real quick, though, are you? The wiki says I, I, that's why it says the wiki says you guys are performing as uh, under another name. But then I looked up, up, up the name. I saw some other cats, some shit. Like I said, <laughs> <laughs> nah, Bush babies, Bush babies. 
Um, we're doing some, we got some new material that we're working on now. Light has a lot of new material right now that's dope. You in the dance hall, hip hop dance hall, that's the dude definitely to see for that. Um, you can hit our page and you'll see a lot of stuff coming from there. Hit his page as well. Um, we got some material that we're working with now. As a matter of fact, we're doing some, some things from a, a native tongues perspective with Jungle Brothers that excited about some other folks from native tongues um so a lot of things going on man that we're happy about just getting in there back in the studio and working and you know no I mean, you just come sit together and so that's great and, you just, and i could ask you some other shit. that's crazy yo um I, and fuck your wiki day man for real um that shit wrong so <laughs> yo <laughs> all right so you moved to florida mm -hmm. and you seem like, you know, I mean, just gathering from your page, you're you know, trying to live like a healthy life and whatnot and trying to just, you know, outdoors, mm -hmm. you kayak. Mm -hmm. I don't understand that sound. But it is, <laughs> so, I mean, I guess the question is, you know, how have you, how have you really matured? I mean, like, you know, like why Florida? Like you've been on it probably for, it seems like for a while. So like, you know, mm -hmm. and, Big part of it, I saw that you said somebody that you've been with your lady for 25 plus years. So please share some advice on that because that's real world shit. Like, how, you know, <laughs> for real. Um, uh, touching on Florida first, um, my formula for where I'm going to settle down is always going to be the quality of life is high and the, pro and the cost of living is low. And when I moved here, that described Florida perfectly. Unfortunately, we live in an economy where that stuff is starting to balance itself out, but that's a whole nother story. Um, but the quality of life is still high out here. I really appreciate just the living. What my, where my dollar stretches out here is nothing like what it was there, but I always appreciate going. I love, you know, uh, love New York. Um, uh, the healthy lifestyle thing um, that came from actually having asthma, man, and going through COVID and experiencing a situation where I was scared for my life because I didn't want to catch COVID with asthma and mm -hmm. possibly die. So I started exercising with my wife and we would just go out and run and then it, be, it moved from just doing it to lose weight because my asthma would only come when I was heavy. So I was bloated heavy. So I went out there, started running, started to lose weight, but then I started posting it. And as I started posting it, I started to notice that people would reply back in my stories and be like, yo, you know, that's, they appreciate it. And now they go in the run and we started doing challenges and, you know, run challenges for 30 days and all types of stuff. Just healthy shit, just to do something different than just, you know, do what we do. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So. Um, that part, and then as far as the wife part, one thing that I just said actually ties into it. If you can do something with your lady other than living, like being able to go out in the morning and go run together, that's just some real shit that really helps a relationship just overall, just being able to have something that we do together. Yep, I agree. Uh, that's, you know? And, and, and yeah. That's, and that's kind of one of the things that works with my, my relationship. We got got my own shit, but yeah. like you know, like we do all this 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 stuff together, so it, it was great. So yeah, that nah, makes it's a good point. Yo, um, I gotta say, a uh, couple. I got a lot of uh, some folks in here. I definitely got a big up. I can't see everybody that's in here now, but um, one of my dudes. My my dude Bang Jermaine Archer is definitely in the building. Got to shout him out. That's one of them dudes that got a million and one Flatbush stories uh, <laughs> that he could tell you. Um, but definitely good dude. Got to shout uh, Light. Got to shout uh, Mr. Man. And uh, definitely y'all get a chance. Definitely go to Bush Babies. Go to our page. See what's going on. We got a lot of shit happening. A lot of things that we're doing moving forward that we love. You know, cast the pull up and see what's popping. Word, yo, and yeah, big up to your, your your crewmates, man. I mean, everybody held it down. I appreciated the, the, the individual styles that you all brought to the, bring to the table, man. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I knew who every, you know, some cats have put on an album. I don't know. I can't tell you who's, who's this cat. But, like, I knew you. I, you know, um, how did it, like, how to going back for a second, how did the mm -hmm. island 
the Jamaican influence become so prevalent in, in, in the music? I mean, obviously, I you know, like, I mean, just like what made that, just what made that the direction, though? Honestly, when we got together, uh, Mr. Man was like the, sh the dude in the chef's coat, and he was just pretty much cooking everything up. And he, it was ill, because this dude was like the dude, I don't know, one of them stories where now I need to go out and get one of these guys, and then I need to go out and get this. Yeah. Us being from Flappish, between myself and Mr. Man, we, once we got together, we already knew we needed a dancehall element to our group. It was just a matter of who, because being in Flatbush. Mm -hmm. When you go to a Flatbush party, you know, basement party, you just, it's 50% dancehall and 50% hip hop. It's just part of the, in the same thing. You know what I'm saying? It's the same shit. So in order to represent what we was going to be as a group, we had to get somebody and it just so happened he saw Light at a talent show, and Light had just really came up here from Jamaica. Dope. And yeah, and he saw he won this talent show, and then he said, Yo, come through, meet my man. And we all, you know, hung together. We started, you know, doing our thing together and bumped into this lady from BMI named Kat Jackson, and she kind of helped us out with, you know, getting the, 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 the logistics of what we were doing together, and then. Just started really moving stuff forward. That's dope, man. Because you, you, did you guys already had that vision ahead of time? It was like this is what we yeah. want to do, and like, it makes sense. Yeah. Like it makes sense. It's based on where you grew up. That that was just part of the part of the culture. Real quick before I let you go, man. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're an old head like me, and, and just you know, we see the fuckery in, the, in the, particularly in the rap game, focusing on that element. I mean, what's your take on, on this? What it is, I mean, because I, I get everything from indifference mm -hmm. from some of us. So mm -hmm. yeah, I just stay in my lane, whatever, whatever, whatever. Right. To right. that shit. To well, you know, you, you gotta like it's it's all hip hop, bro. So I, well, where are you with it? <laughs> Let's um, call out the fuckery by name first. What's the fuckery we talking about? So I can speak directly oh, to the fuckery. Just, I, mean, um, I mean, damn, wait, oh, it's, damn, I got only got nine minutes. Uh, now, nah, I mean, all right, just just speaking on, I guess. Just the fact that bars aren't really worth anything, worth as much on the commercial, on anything anymore, really. I mean, mm -hmm. it's about, the, when you look at like, where the source is gone. I mean, when you look at like, I mean, the, the video shows were always kind of fuckery. I mean, I'm just saying this, mm -hmm. in terms of the, mm -hmm. the pimping, the ultra pimping out of just, you know, I'm looking at like sexy. I don't even like saying names. Like it's just the shit. Like, the, the, the fuckery that's in, in the industry right now. Well, what's deemed hip hop? I, you know I, I, mean? I, I, if you asked me this question at 40, I would have answered it differently. But at 50, I have a different answer. Here's what I'm learning at 50. Okay, mm -hmm. is and this is I don't understand why the whole if the whole country thought this way. Just just understanding that two things can be right at the same time. Mm -hmm. See, at 40, I didn't really feel that way. I at 50, what I'm, what I'm learning is two things can be right at the same time. Thus, there's an equal argument. You take just the war that's going, two things can be right at the same time. Right. So with that, as far as the fuckery that's going on in hip hop, here's what I know. There's one part of it that says when we were at our age in the 90s and our parents were listening to it, how did they feel about what we were doing? That can be right. But the other side of that to me is at that time when we were doing what we were doing, we were also studying what came before us. Yes, thank you. That's what I say. When people bring that up, I always say that. <laughs> Mom, mom, do cleaning, cleaning, cleaning the house. We heard, that we got those vibrations. Right. We know the ocean. We were sampling it. We stole it all. Right. Exactly. There's a disconnect right now of what, but let me tell you, there's a disconnect of what's happening. But now, you know what's happening right now? You know what the new hip hop is becoming? They're sampling everything from the 2000s now, the early 2000s now and then they're rapping over that stuff and calling that reconnecting to, to what's going on so 
the pimping of this whole thing and and, and what is, is what happens with everything that becomes a commodity man it's supply and demand the problem is is instead of instead of doing it on our own we chose to take the money so someone else could do it for us mm. you know what i'm saying and new york is, is a big uh new york New York has a big New York has a lot to do with that. See, in the South, they wasn't doing that. They was pushing it out their trunk. Oakland was pushing it out their trunk. Right. Right. That spirit was there. That spirit was there. But we broke that spirit because in order to get to where we were at, New York, they had to go ahead and go corporate. Yep. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. New York had a lot to do with yep. that. You know? So I mean, I, I'll say this at, 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 at just say this um, strong. Uh, you have strong men, right? And they create children in an era where uh, they, you know, let them grow. And when children grow under grow under strong men, you know what I mean? They can sometimes be weak because they don't experience all the other stuff that they would experience, you know, situations. And then what happens is those weak men create strong men and then it just keeps going on that's the way life goes so things are going to come up things are going to come down we're going to here's the crazy thing we're going to get to a point where lyrics matter we will it it will reverse and it'll get to that point when i might be old and but I'm super I'm, old and gray yeah, that's what I, mean. I mean i think it will but i'm hoping i'm around to see it Okay. I hope I'm around to see it, but hey, man, dudes is back to wearing th those crazy cats that we would never dress like. They're back to wearing baggy clothes. Mm -hmm. They drop the skinny stuff and they're back to wear super, super baggy clothes. Anything can happen. Yeah, that's true, and, and it has. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly has. We got to get ready to get out of here, um, real quick. We got uh, we're going live with Shape Hip Hop Culture. We're breaking down four classic tracks, Cream. Brooklyn Zoo, Lottie Dottie, and Check the Rhyme. Um, that's coming up next. And then next week, we got our man Dulio from oh, Connecticut OG holding it down. And then YZ the following week. 30 jurors in the building. What's this up? Oh, thank you, man. I'm glad we got to do this. Like, yes. I, I really glad we finally got to do this. Peace to you, brother. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep hitting us in the head with them joints and keep being an activist. No, nah, I mean, I'm going to try, try my best, and I appreciate the, the, the encouragement and support, man, because it does help me. Stay on their neck. The stay on nah, stay on their neck, man. Stay on their neck. Appreciate stay you. Stay on their neck. Because if there's no voice out there, there's no balance. Appreciate you. Nah, All nah right. I really do, man. So we'll get this up on the YouTube. All of our joints are up on YouTube. We'll be on the YouTube. I'll tag you and everything. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. And thank you, family. We'll stay in touch. And uh, yeah, hit, yo, when the new music's ready, it's your boy. Let's do that. It's your boy. You got it. All right. All right. Thanks. Later. Appreciate it. Peace.